May. Home late. Gone since New Year's Eve. A wild escapade that started a year ago January. Or was it the January before that? The night Marlowe and Art Smitten dabbed a dot of paint on each other's forehead. A ritual initiation into a secret society and a vow to voyage to lands unknown. Mr. Marlowe, I presume. Mr. Smitten, I presume. Now, many months later, Marlowe was coming up for air. Wow, strange. Another year come and gone. Just winter, now spring. He wasn't certain if it was spring of this year or spring of last year or spring of next year. But it would soon be summer. The wheel keeps rolling round. He was covered in paint. His clothes were smeared with it. Paint on his hands, paint on his feet. He looked around. He'd rolled the trash cans to the street. His wife's car was in the driveway. No sign of domestic turbulence. And while he'd been gone, obviously he'd been here and been busy. A paradox? Marlowe sifted through his studio. It was filthy. The thought of cleaning it overwhelmed him. His ambitions had drifted into chaos. He prowled through scraps of this and that, ferreting from the rubble forgotten paintings. It had all the look of a crime scene or a photograph waiting to develop or a portal into a secret world. Scribbled on the bathroom mirror in soap, Teatro Surrealismo, curious and curiouser. Marlowe had traveled through the looking glass and back, but where exactly had he been while out of his body or mind or combination thereof? He remembered the box of magic dust, the dark images he'd seen in that mirror. Just a dream? Maybe, but maybe not. He needed his pond to calm. The barest of ripples would lose the reflection. He was looking for Art Smitten and for Bunny and Bester, that legendary duo from the past trapped in the future. Was such a thing possible? And if you could be expunged from history, could you be restored? He thought of Stalin's Russia after the purge. Trotsky cut out of photographs. One day you matter, and the next you're suddenly a blank face on Facebook. Not even a YouTube sensation. You could scream, hey, don't you know who I think I am? For Art Smitten, sales would take a hit. Tough to sell when you don't exist. For Lester Bester and Sam Bunny, a shocking loss for the world after all they'd done and meant to so many. So many laughs, so many lumps in the throat and heart tugs. Pathos was their bread and butter. They were bittersweet men. A wave of melancholy at the prospect of what lay before him made Marlowe shudder. And what were those songs looping in his head? One look, all it took, to bed was their fate. May fate bring agony or joy. Mr. Cuff and Mrs. Foofin were destined to be stupin, And all Cupid could say was oi. There was much to unpack. Dreams, diaries, fragments of memory, stacks of paintings. His job was to decipher these remnants. Nothing in his studio would make sense until he did, nor would it be of any use if he couldn't take an audience through the looking glass with him. Will you regret in the past what you do in the future? And can the future inform you in the now? Will Ten Cents and Mr. Boots save the day? An exercise Marlowe periodically undertook was to list everything he thought important and then stand on his head. He'd discover what he thought was most important was probably least important. He had learned this from Art Smitten, who famously said, you don't need a million designs. You need one design photographed on a celebrity 
and you need to be ready to sell a million t-shirts. Art also said, in sports there is a winner and a loser. In medicine, your patient lives or dies. In business, you make money or you don't. In science, the experiment can be proven or not. But art, no one knows. Even if the marker is money, what is popular can fade, and what is reviled can be reassessed. And it is in this vague uncertainty which every artist cloaks their hope. <laughs>